Bill's just in breaking news. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No bullshit. The fuck, mannequin? It's not working? Good answer. All right, everybody. Welcome to the No Bullshit News Hour, August 6th, 2021. Mark Fellauer is vacationing in the sunny, balmy climes of... Guess where? Where? Paris, France? No. No. London, England? Doubt it. Hollywood, California? No, Columbus, Ohio, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. All right. That guy knows how to party. So we got Mannequin Joe working the board today. Forgive us if it fucks up. You guys know about Mannequin. Red's in house. Karen's in her she shed. And also joining us is former, well, current, but soon to be former, City Council Vice President of Flint, Maurice Davis, going back to his old nom de guerre, King of the Party Blues, because they kicked his ass to the curb. What a cycle, Maurice. Wow. That's what you get for, that's what you get. And a majority African American city for going for Trump, bro. They used you. That's it. That's it. Man, he was the most famous black man in America for like two months. And now he's out <laughs> on his ass behind a parking garage, <laughs> licking his wounds. What kind of car are you driving? Well, it depends. I'm a truck man. <laughs> I like my, my Ford truck diesel. Shit. I like big trucks. I like big trucks. I'm in a Jeep right now, though. You're, you're in a Jeep. Jeep. We're not mentioning They don't advertise on this show. Just It's, it's a Jeep. A Jeep. <laughs> anyway, man. Um, share, 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 right, man? Yeah. Share, share, share. <laughs> and where can you get? You know what? I was working TCF for the, uh, the absentee vote counting, right? Yes. Uh, on, on Tuesday. And... It, it's Detroit, older Detroit. Like, I miss you. What, what have you been doing? I go, I'm doing a podcast. They go, well, how do you get that? Yeah. Not on the VCR, Grandma. Well, how do you get that? Red, tell them how you get it. Well, that. you can go to iTunes, Google Play, and over 40 other streaming services and just type in No Bullshit News Hour with Charlie LaDuff. And you can also catch it live on Facebook and in replay as well. And YouTube, too, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So all you really got to do is just put in Charlie LaDuff. Just go into Google. Also watch it from the website. All the old episodes are uploaded there. That's a pretty simple, you know, easy way to find it as well. What'd you say? Because Mannequin was... Had you on punishment. Yeah, still. Jesus. What'd you say? Never mind. Keep going. Right. Right, man. <laughs> hey, you can find it, Grandma. Come on. Get hip. Thanks, Mannequin. Do you got your cut to you, please? Show everybody what you look like. Okay, anyway, here's what, here's what we're going to do today. We'll, One thing is, you're keeping us consistent in the show. Something fucked up already. I had never seen him <laughs> move so much. I don't even know what the fuck he's doing over there. Um, listen, we're going we're to talk about my dog. I, I want to thank you for the well wishes. We're going to talk about uh, TCF. Uh, you know, Cobo Hall with the big stop the skit steal scandal. We got an update from there. Um, and I also got to, like, Get into can can the fucking local TV news and other people stop stealing material? They don't know what to, they don't know how to do. They do the work. So I'm, I'm gonna lay down some ground rules since it's no bullshit news hour. We break half the news in this town. This is what's gonna happen. We're gonna get into that. We um we need to talk about Cuomo and Whitmer, Oof. and then of course a lot of outpouring. There is a lot of outpouring. There is a drive for Karen Dumas to be nominated. As a lieutenant governor of the state of Michigan. Karen, Karen. Now, I don't Karen. know what party we're talking about. I, I don't even know what political party Karen belongs to. The no BS party. Yeah. <laughs> well, we see what happens when you go Republican. That's how it's Mr. Davis. Yeah, he's he not a Republican. He, how many times he got to tell you? Oh, well, my bad. When you Republican associated. associated. Maurice, you want to get in on that? Well, I'm going to tell you something. As far as I can tell, hell, like the Republican might be the right side. Ooh. Like some of them Democrats here. Wait, breaking news. Beep, 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 Give me some of that Republican money. Hell, that's what I want. Is... I tried Democrat. I'm still broke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, 
That's a thing. You got money. I think I do need to try Republican. Hell, all I, my I, Democratic I friends ain't got nothing. I can't belong to either of these parties. I can't. You know why? You know what the Republicans are. Yeah. And the new, you know, the new uh, working class Republicans calling all the other Republicans, Republicans in name only, a rhino. Yeah. No, no, they're really the Republicans. You came late. You're the Republican in name only. You're the populist. You just hijacking the party. Pretty much. Okay, now I look at the Democrats. You know what they promised me? They promised me Wall Street going to get under control. They promised me big corporations aren't going to run stuff. They promised me equity. You know what I'm really getting? I'm getting an empty fucking Biden check in Juneteenth. Nothing's changing. You don't even get no days off of work for Juneteenth. Yes, you do. That's... Yes, it's a national holiday, bro. Okay, well, uh, we're going to see how many people off come Juneteenth <laughs> next year. Me? I, it's, except for Christmas and New Year's, I, I, I take the overtime. I take the overtime, man. That's, you know. But you know what, Charlie? Don't overlook what Maurice said. You know, I mean, and this is what I think people have to ask themselves. It isn't about the party. It's about the person for me. And I think that people need to look at especially Democrats, they've been asking the same people for the same things for an extended period of time. And at the end of the day, what really have you gotten? I mean, and that's just a very honest question that everybody that blindly votes really for either party should ask themselves. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and we said this on the show, at a certain point, you've got to look at the person that's running and separate that person maybe from party politics it's because it's not working. I mean, when when John Lewis said that he was, I saw a documentary, he says, you know, we come and we march on the Pettus Bridge every year for 50 years and we are trying to put, and I'm thinking like, we're still asking for the same things we've been asking for for 50 years. Yep. What do we, what do we gotten? And you know what, what, what happens? Now you're getting a, a, this is what's happening in America. You got a wider group of people asking for something that the smaller group of people was asking for 50 years ago. The, the have less and have nots are the biggest people at the table. Yep. And we ain't doing shit. And getting the less portions. Uh, you know, and that's, I think, the root. That's why we talk to economists. We talk about inflation. That's really what's going on here, my opinion. S side well, note, just throw this out here. They say It's time to fix it, Charlie, one way or the other. Fucking fix it. Go on. Uh, today's report, 960,000 jobs added. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to throw that out there. Biden was up there talking about that when I left the house. So yeah, I, I don't, spoke on the economy. But everybody's unemployed and no no place is able to even operate at, at even 75 percent capacity because they don't have enough people. So are those jobs people that that jobs that people went back to or are these new jobs? I went to the spa the other day. They don't have half of the services because they don't have a staff. And inflation's at like five point eight. I mean, unemployment is at five point eight at, at the very bottom of this thing. What was it at? Like. Four three, I believe. Four, yeah, or something like that. So uh, we're almost like back to where we start. Full employment, and yet we have a problem. I don't really quite understand it. But before we get to it, let me let me just let y'all remind y'all that No Bullshit News Hour brought to you by American Coney Island at the corner of Michigan and Lafayette. Business is doing well. Thanks for coming back. You know which one's clean. You know which one's tasty. And you know which one when the Delta comes back and we all got to sit in the house again where you can get it delivered to your door. Just go to AmericanConeyIsland.com and you get the Coney kit. Dozen dogs, all the fixings, fresh. I'll pack it myself for you. Yes. And ADR, ADR consultants. It, you know what, Maurice? If Flint had hired ADR consultants to manage the switchover to that water treatment plant that didn't work, we might have not have been in this problem. If Flint really wanted to manage those pipe contracts, put somebody in charge of managing it and reporting back to you, ADR could have saved them. Saved them all that headache. Saved them all that lost money. That's what ADR does. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too small. Property management, IT, construction, deconstruction, permit, fighting City Hall in the right way, trying to work with City Hall, get your business done. Call Barry Ellen Tuck. He's ethical, honest, smart at 248-318-9424. Pretty snappy, right? A A ADR. ADR consult. And finally, this one. Can you play it for me? Have this mannequin. <laughs> mannequin, give me, give me. Well, you got to remember.
Fabulous Death. What you think of this one, Maurice? When it comes to security and investment, there's only one top line call. That's Royal Alliance and Associate Incorporated. That's right. Luke Noakia, Royal Alliance Associate. They specialize in security. They sure do, Maurice. They do. College savings plans. They're the best in the business. Best in the business. All of your investment needs. Look here. Right there, right there at uh, Northwestern Highway. You want to call. 696. He's centrally located. So pick up the phone today. What's that number? And call the one and only. 248. 663-4748. Luke Nowacki. In Coel. Matter of fact, Tevin King stop by. Indeed, brother. Indeed. 248-663-4748. You know what he's talking about. Incorporate. That's a fucking jam. That, that's you got to be the coolest <laughs> commercial I've heard. I kept calling him up once a month. Hey man, where's the jingle? I just thought it'd be a little jingle, man. Did you do? <laughs> did you do everything on that? Yes. Wow. Yes. We got to bring him into the show since he's unemployed right now. <laughs> he's gonna be our Flint correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look here. I want to thank you all. My dog, Rupert. Oh, Rupe. I was up in the country last weekend, got out of here, drove up to my shack, outhouse. It's on, the, it's on the M25. It's that country road. It's a highway. They go fast, but it's out there. And I pull up, and I open the hatch. I let him out. I open the door. I get my little bag of underwear and toothbrush, right? But my dog takes off because just by chance, there's a woman walking like her little schnauzer or whatever it is on the other side of the old country road. He was chasing the cat, huh? He, it was that little schnauzer, just the, the call of the wild. And he boogied through the pine trees into the highway to get to this dog. Boom! I heard it was a SUV. It, it was horrifying. You heard him squeal. And then you heard silence and you heard the screech of the brakes. And I run out to the highway and the fairing has fallen off this SUV. Like, wow. oh, fuck. And I just happened to be on the headset with my wife. I said, the dog just got hit. And my, my daughter's in the background, is he dead now? And like an alligator, dude emerges from the culvert. And he kind of like slithers across the highway. Like, oh, my God, man, his bones are shattered. His... Is he must be bleeding internally, and he, and he comes, and he just kind of collapses at my feet. And I'm looking, I'm checking, and, and um, really sad. And I bring him close to the house, little bit by little bit. Gotta, it's out in the country. I can't give him no hospital, you know? Right. I observe him overnight. I give him a little water. He's fine. He just got a sprained foreleg. Isn't that amazing? That's an alpha yes. wolf. That's amazing. Only Charlie's dog. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a terrible. You know, I grew up on a busy street, you know, in Westland, in Livonia, right on the line there. And I had so many dogs get hit by cars. It's, it's a terrible feeling. So I put that online last night. Red, well, well, give, give, me some, <laughs> give me some Facebook numbers for my dog. Well, uh, uh, all together, Rupert got um, about 5,000 reactions in total off of both pages. Um, Comment-wise, he got approximately over, a little over 600 comments and a total of 18 shares. So 5,000 well wishes and 600 comments. For old Rupert. I appreciate it because I know, like, we're family and you know you, you care about me and my family. That's, that's terrific. That's Yes. I, I know what that is. Or at least the dog. But I, I'm sorry, I got to say, folks, I was also doing an experiment with y'all. Because <clears throat> I worked, y'all remember the TCF Center? Remember that one? Cobo Hall, where the absentee votes went down in November, right? Stop the steal. 150,000 bogus ballots were brought in there. They couldn't get the count right, right? There was corrupt malware in there and Putin and Xi in China were manipulating the election. Trump unity bridge getting arrested. 
Yeah, well, whatever that meant. <laughs> I, I worked a week on that story. Like, it was the next time. Now, this last Tuesday was the primaries for stuff in Detroit, right? Yep. Mayor, Proposition P, going to change the Constitution of Detroit. I worked it again. 100% accurate. I thought it would be important. We, we put the car back in the garage, we changed the oil, we washed it, we waxed it. They're bringing it out for the first time right. since that fucking scandal, that ripoff. Wow, this is going to be amazing. I want to see what they did. The new and improved. There was nobody there. Nobody. No, no media, no observers. So in the morning, it goes from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. when the polls close. That's We had to be there, right? The city and the state doesn't give us any food, no warm water, no coffee, no nothing. And so what were people doing? Hundreds of them. Suitcases on wheels, beach coolers. They're just hauling them into Kobo. Like, I'm thinking, remember that wagon with the photographer from the local TV? Right. Station? I'm like, well, this could be 10,000... Ballots. Bullshit votes. Nope. Nope. Nobody cared. They were ham sandwiches, <laughs> soda pops, Concord grapes. You know, and everybody was, I'd say the average age is about 70. Geritol, Charlie, any Geritol in the back? There, there were oxygen tanks. You could, you could see the, the lines in the noses. I mean, this is, this is who does it, right? Yeah. Nobody there. So by the time 5 o'clock p.m. rolled around, shift change came in. You can't ask a 70-year-old, right, with low blood sugar to work any more than 12 hours sequestered in the middle of a fucking COVID spike, right? Right. Okay, so 5 o'clock comes in, and that's the rollover, but we got to stay till 8. State law says you got to be sequestered till the polls close. So that's till 8. So we got three hours. To kill. What'd they do with us? Hey, man, I can put, put that up. Put that picture of where they put us. See that? that? Bingo? It looks like like it's it's a side room, a little conference hall in Kobo next to the big ballroom where the computers were. Look at that. What do you see there? Like at least 500 people, right? They're majority African American, the majority elderly, shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder. In the middle of a Delta spike, and the government's telling me that COVID's real. That we might have to do mass mandates. We might have to do shutdown. And this is what you did. And when I put that online, when I did do the goings on at TCF, what I get on my, my page? Well, combined total between both pages. Come on, man. Speed it up. About 169 reactions, <laughs> 59 comments with a total of 19 shares. They give less than a damn about you and TCF. I know. Thank you for loving my dog. But don't you got no love for the elders? Well, Charlie, call it for what it is. It's, it's a group of old uh, African-Americans, old black people that are volunteering. So call it what it is. And it just does not resonate the same way as your dog does with some people. <laughs> Obviously with most people or a lot of people. Now, look here. That's look. It's not volunteer. It is volunteer, but you get paid $500 for not only that shift, but you got to go to a training class, right? Okay. Nice money. Not stupendous money, but it is for people living on a fixed income in one of the poorest large cities in America. And to treat them like you got to sit here and take attendance in the middle of a COVID is bullshit. It's bullshit. They didn't even feed y'all. I'm still on They didn't feed us. Wow. So, so, look, we shut down the schools, Maurice. We shut down business. We suspended the Constitution of the state of Michigan to ostensibly protect the elderly and the infirm. And you couldn't come up with a emergency, one-time law, allow them to go home. Let the director of elections, you know what I mean, <laughs> at his discretion, start releasing people. It, one guy said to me, though, he goes, this is this how the man gets you. Older dude, older gentleman. I go, what the fuck is this? Because people are getting mad, and I'm, I'm speaking up for the people. And he, go, he looks at me, he goes, son, you know what you sign up for. 
I go, no, I didn't know what the fuck I signed up for. No, when, when I go work on the line, I don't then sign up for my foot to get cut off. When I sign up to work in the coal mine, I didn't sign up for it to fall on my head. That was ridiculous. You got to demand more. Did, did, they, did they require y'all show vaccination proof to be a poll worker? Yes. Yes. So let me, let me go back to this. Go ahead, Karen. No, I'm saying, Charlie, I'm reading some of the comments, and several people are saying, I guess they have signed up you know, for notifications for you when you post. They received a notification when you posted about your dog. They never received a notification when you posted about TCF. See, that Facebook's against all the old black people, too. That's you damn. know what Facebook's doing. Yeah, that's that fucking Zuckerberg. Yeah, but you fucking take that rocket to fucking Mars and don't come back. Right. <laughs> everybody said they didn't get any notifications. So well, go there, folks. Said, go there, folks. Go there, folks. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, now you, I, you, you pay attention to our friends and family out there, right? Because I'm a different kind of friend and family. I'm a right. dude certain of himself, not certain of what's going on in life, and that I'm going to get out there, be proactive, and figure it out. So... Here's what I want you to read that nobody read. I think people are afraid of something that's outside their wheelhouse. If you're on the right side of things and I do something about Whitmer, you're there, baby. If I'm on the left side of things and I say nobody brought in 150,000 ballots of Kobo, the left's with me. Once I, I go the other way, you drop out. It's, let, me, let me tell you what happens at Kobo. Okay, first of all, it was 14% was the turnout. No Trump, nobody comes. 14% is the same thing we got back in 2017 during the primary. Yep. We didn't gain anything. The whole deal is now the, the three quarters of the votes were absentee ballots. Okay? People don't go to the polls now, but it's just, nobody, nobody wants to vote. But this time, they got it 100% right. You got to give props to Detroit Board of Elections, 100% balanced. The amount of ballots and the amount of people that checked in to vote was 100% accurate. That's what's up. I mean, that's good news. Yeah, that is. is it? That's good news. It shows improvement in the system to some degree. Let me give another uh, shout out while we're talking to elected officials actually doing something uh, responsible. Uh, our secretary of state deserves a nod, at least for me. For the first time, the uh, tag renewals for multiple vehicles all came in one envelope at the same time. That's <laughs> never happened in the past. You have to sit there and wait so you can't, you know, go whether it's to the kiosk or do it online or by mail. So kudos. Somebody, you know, it took however many years for somebody to think about it. But is that wait, know, is, is, is that it. is that as good as we get? Because look, that's, just, that's it. I'm supposed to go into the secretary of state, right, to show them personally that my motorcycle has insurance. Not mm -hmm. like I can't send them a number or a picture, right? I can't get into the Secretary of State's office for 10 weeks. You got to make an appointment. What's 10 weeks from now? Ooh. Winter time! Yeah, October. I'm off the mm -hmm. road. November, I'm thinking. Yeah, I was able to... Two, month, two months and a half. Yeah, I was able to mail my shit in, so... Yeah, but see, I told you, like, this is one of those, I got the draw. Yeah. You got to come in this time. There's no getting around it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I'm like, it's like fucking November. Forget it. You won't be riding this year, Charlie. What happened? I mean, what's going on with the Secretary of State? Apparently, they found a way to make a already slow system even slower. Okay, now, so, no baboons beating on the glass this time around, because <laughs> they ain't no Trump. Right? And by the way... Listen, yeah, they were baboons. You're my friends. Here's why I feel about that. You have to have a COVID test to get in there. You have to be credentialed to get in there. You have to be trained to get in there. Just because somebody texted to you the frauds going on, by the way, by the time you all got down there and beaten on the glass, all the votes were already counted. They were breaking down the equipment. You were too late. I suggest this, and there was a super sweet... White woman from Southfield, Republican. She came down to work. And first I was in the alternate room, and they came in and went like this. Detroit Board of Elections. Are there any Republicans? And she popped right up and put her hand up. You're first. We want you in there. We want you in there. We don't right. want this bullshit. Right. Right? So that's wonderful. Now I'll do this and open it up. But this is, this is key. On the left... 
you know, the Jim Crow law. Right. Right. Maurice. Right. Uh, you try yeah. to take my vote. You're trying to make sure people of color can't vote and whatnot. I'm the guy to scan your vote in. Beep. I actually handle your vote. It comes to me. I check the timestamp. Right. And then I pass to the next one. Make sure your ballot number is correct with the one I got in the computer and nobody's voting someplace else because that barcode will follow you. Okay? Right. Now it was slow, not like November. This time it was slow, and I could look at every data point on the screen. When you entered the number, when you scanned it, guess what populated on the upper left-hand cell of the screen? What? Your driver's license number. I was, uh, wow. To a person. And I don't know, you know, some of them could have been state IDs, but they all had either a driver's license or a state ID number. The Secretary of State already tracking you that way. OK, now, if you want to register online right now, it's all online. You got to give them your driver's license and or state ID and your Social Security number. So now I'm walking around all the people that did my job, right? The seat number one, the in the captain. OK, I go, you see what that is? And then we're all talking and I don't speak for everybody. Right. I don't. We're all talking. I go. They're already tra everybody was surprised because of what we're getting from political leadership. They try to steal your vote. So most of us agreed in this. We we don't want ineligible people voting. We don't want people voting twice. Right. I moved away from my address in Detroit and I'm still registered there for some reason. Why not have the last four digits of your social security number next to your signature? The government doesn't issue it you anything. You're you're born with that now. Right. Right. You don't got to show the card. Secretary of State already got the card. Yeah. Why? Why not? What any uh, red Karen Maurice. My black friends. Does that sound like somebody trying to steal a vote? I'll leave it to you. Is, is that onerous? Well, no, it's not. Now, I always thought you showed your Social Security card at the Secretary of State where you registered to vote anyway. That's, it's been like that forever. So, Maurice, would you do you disagree with putting like a pin number? So you sign yeah. more. Go ahead. You should have an ID. You know, you shouldn't be off the street voting. You, you Corruption now is running rampant in this nation. And with all these computers and hacks and I don't know how they say Russian, all of them get involved in election. But nowadays, I think man and I smile they self. We just slid down a slippery slope. So, you know, it's far beyond me the way they can hack all of these type of devices. So I don't know, Charlie. It's going to be hard to bring this because it's ramping up. I don't know. Karen, what do you think? Well, I mean, I've always voted and I've always shown my driver's license. Uh, and I would always imagine that there should be one commonality, whether it's your driver's license, your last four digits of your Social Security, now, that anything that would make this efficient and accurate. So it should be that way. And if it, if it hasn't been, you know, we ask why not. If it is now, then finally. I mean, that is what ties us to everything that we do, what we buy, what we purchase, you know, where we go. So why not for voting just to make it uh, more efficient and accurate? See, and I've never showed my ID at the polls. I refuse to show it because I know the law and it, others don't have to do it. I'm not giving up that right. But here's that's being American. Really, Charlie? That's not tell, really. Because I mean, Never. as soon as they walk in, you got to yeah. fill this out and give them your, your driver's license. And, and, they go like, like, and I go like this. Walking. They're like, your driver's license? I said, I'm not required to show that. And they go, yes, you are. I said, I, I'm not. Madam, I, sir, I, I, I know the law. <laughs> and then they go get the supervisor. And then they say, uh, no, he's not required to turn, turn the, the, the paper over and he will sign an affidavit that... That signature is his signature by giving my so signature. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try that in the next election and you keep fifty dollars handy in case they arrest me. So let, 100%. Me, let me let me see how that works out for me. Hundred percent. But now I'm I'm thinking this. Everything's online. I don't mind as a middle person. Look, a little security. I don't like look, I got relatives that don't have a driver's license. Haven't had it for years. Right? I, I don't that thing is not a credit card, your vote. I don't think you should have to have an ID, but there should be that security code. You've already got it. Well, to, uh, to keep the noise down, though, you know, you add a little extra security in there. It's the most precious thing we have as Americans. It's our vote, our opinion. So, 
I don't see why people got all these hangups with protecting something that precious. Given the, if you got to show ID, show ID. I mean, as a functioning adult, you you need ID to do everything. But you know, well, remember too, Red. People thought about that just as an impediment for people to vote. Um, you know, if it's used incorrectly. But there should be something, whatever that thing is, consistently to tie your vote to you so that it is accurate. So whatever that is. See, I'm trying to find the middle ground because I know the history of this country and I know what the poll tax was and I, I know all the shit that was going on. All so right. I get it. And I'm with it. I am. Look at me, Mr. Middle of the Road. I get it, man. You can't fool me what, what the history of this country is. But now we're going to, like Maurice said, a whole nother way of doing shit. Like, it's a, it's a tremendous shift what just happened. I'm not looking to burden anybody going down to the DMV, get my state driver's license. It's going to take two and a half fucking months and I'm going to miss the vote. So here's the thing, though. Talking to election officials in Detroit, this is the whisper. This is this is me doing the work for you folks. Yeah, if we give them that. They're just going to ask for more. And it doesn't end with that. It doesn't end with that at all. You know, it's it's trying to the drop boxes are going to be, you know, reduced and the hours are going to be reduced. I said, maybe so. But every Maurice knows Maurice from Flint. You, you know what a contract is. They're all negotiated. That's I think that's one thing we can agree on. And that's some tremendous movement. Yeah, definitely. That was a cue to you, Maurice. Well, you know, things is constantly changing. And we're in that time in 2021. This is not the whole America. The whole world is gone. So we have to just play it by ear because there's more and more regulation. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared of it, to be honest with you. Uh, your First Amendment, Second Amendment rights, they're impeding. Everything is becoming communist down there. We got to abide by the government. We gonna, I don't know where we're headed, but I don't like what I'm seeing. Or it's fascist or that. communist. It's just big brother, man. Get the fuck out of my life. It is, Charlie. I told you about the doctor, uh, Mercola, that, they, that they're pressuring to shut down his website because he's encouraging, you know, healthy eating and vitamins over the vaccine. Uh, CNN is they were following him around and they're the they're, he's being forced to shut down his website. I mean, what kind of country are we becoming when we don't have a right to hear an alternative view or voice? I mean, this is something really concerning about the the not the for this this push that they have. It's almost it's 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 scary to me. Now, it's scary. It's it's scarier to me than, than 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 getting it itself. And no more than ever are you able to be heard. So please, going back to this, do me a favor, please, for me, because I, th I thought you might be interested in the follow up. The one guy that'll do it. Remember, TCF was the focal point of this mayhem that's been going on for nine months, and then nobody bothered. I, I did it for you. I wanted you to see. Don't be afraid to get in there and comment and, and think out loud. Because in my play, the only people, I, I don't want people that make fun of my grandfather's name. I don't like racists. I don't like bullies. But everybody's welcome. Like, we all populate an earth together. You know what I mean? Like, you're there. I got to consider what you say. But I can't go to parties anymore because people don't do the work. Right. You know, it's like, no, that's that's not correct, brother. And then it gets into an argument. And I'm like, OK, fuck it. I got to go. What do you think, mannequin? <laughs> I agree with Joey. <laughs> As always, plastic, that strong, silent type. Plastic, man. Hey, did we ever get that picture of you up? I want to see you. Yeah, we just saw it. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Fucking plastic, man. All right, look. Um, I, I, I want to thank David Nathan. He is the guy they brought in in November to make sense of this, to train people, to try to get it to 100% because Detroit's never gotten it ever at 100%. And with computers... Right. That's a whole new ball game. Now right. you can count that it's not 100 uh, percent. Right. Right. Dead people cannot vote, folks. They can't. Let, real quick. Dead people are voting. Well, if you send me an absentee ballot and you all notice none of us got absentee ballot applications this time. around. No. You notice that? I got 10 last time. Yeah. No Trump. Nobody gives a shit. Right. I got a 
an absentee bowl. I got a thing to, to ask if I, I don't know. I didn't even open it actually, but I think. It oh, you got one? Me. Maurice, did you get one? Not at all. I didn't get one. Did you get one? No. And no Trump, nobody cares. But David Nathan was brought in to try to make sense of him. Him and Daniel Baxter, the director of elections. And I got to give it to him. It's good news, folks. Detroit got its shit together. It's very good news. Sometimes you want good news. But David <laughs> does not like me very much because of an unflattering portrait I put of him on TV a couple of years ago. No, not you, Charles. Yeah, I'm just doing my job. I'm just the media. You know what? But he thought it important enough to let me in, not only to observe, but to let me put my hands on it so I could report to you accurately what's going on. And I'm telling you, folks, and nobody there can argue with me on this, it works. They're, they're, I'm a kind of an expert in it now. It works. And you can put in comments. Karen will let me aware of me. If you've got any questions about how it works. The process. I'll tell you. So down in Maricopa County, you know, this isn't a forensic audit. You know what this crackpot, never before auditing company they got down there? Yeah. The ninja people. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're um, taking swabs and Q-tips and stuff and looking for traces of bamboo fiber. Oh, my God. To see if they can prove that bogus ballots from Asia were shipped in. This is not an audit. This is crackpot shit. And a waste of taxpayer dollars. Well, you know, I, I, anyway. So I thought I would play this story from a few years ago when David Nathan of the Board of Direct uh, Elections was a state representative Thank you for permission, Fox 2, which I haven't asked for, and I'm using it anyway, since you think it's okay to steal my shit. At least I'm actually, I made this. The crime occurred here. A local politician whose basement's filling up with his own feces goes to his neighbor, the homicide dick, and asks if he can tear out the fence to tear out the pipe. The detective says, sure, just make it right. Something stinks. Son of a... Homicide Sergeant Ernie Wilson, former cop of the year, decorated for valor, just wants his wife's pansies fixed. When I asked him about the flower garden, he said that's what you do when you plant things on the easement. We're not responsible for when you plant something on the easement. So he's speaking like a true politician. Speaking like a true politician. Actually, when he told me that, it was screw my wife and her garden. I'm really f***ed off about it. State Representative David Nathan, former Eagle Scout and vice president of a neighborhood whose slogan is Detroit's home of good neighbors. They couldn't work it out, so they called us Fox 2. Yeah, this is Charlie Duff from Fox 2. He wants it fixed. You didn't fix it. What's there to get? I'll meet you over here at 3.30. Next thing you know, the representative showed up with a backhoe. Another problem solver. No problem too little, no problem too big. The saying goes, good fences make good neighbors, but trampled tulips can cause men to war. You're here talking to me about a situation that I had to take care of to keep my family safe. It's an emergency situation. We let, can't have anybody go in the backyard. Let me go tell him that it's an emergency situation. He's got his own emergency situation now. His dog could fall in that hole and hurt itself. There is no hole back there, Charlie. You've seen it. He says that's not a hole. He said, that's not a hole? Then what is it? I guess it's just part of the earth coming up like in Japan. Leave nothing look for, for neighbors. Plain and simple. And as we found out here, it's much easier to repair a fence than a friendship. It's you easement, understand? it's cities. It's not your yard. It's cities. You aren't the city. You cannot grade mud. I don't care how old you is, it's part of science. Keep Tell my wife it's fertilized. Listen, listen, well, that means you listen, did say that. I started to pull you off that back hold in. Get your ass on somewhere else. Don't come in my yard. I'm telling you what I started to do. Don't threaten me. Goodbye. There you go. And there you have it. Another someone did someone else dirt story cleaned up. Working for you in Detroit. Charlie Duff. Fox 2 News. Now, that's how you do news. 
I'm just appalled that you stole your own work from Fox 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I want to get into that in a minute. <laughs> I, I, I want to I get into Maurice Davis. Our, our special guest today is Maurice Davis, uh, King of the Party Blues, uh, Vice President of Flint City Council, uh, representing Ward 2, who had uh, just been voted out of office. This segment is brought to you by David Hall Mortgage, who... Wants to remind you, interest rates are still at an historic low. Either get the dream house you're looking for or refinance, lower your debt burden, get the kitchen fixed. It's pretty simple. All you got to do is go to davidhallmortgage.com or call 248-308-5000. Best in the business. Everything you're going to need here, they're going to they're gonna help you with. davidhallmortgage.com. 248-308-5000. Really appreciate their support. No bullshit news hour. Maurice Davis. Brother, what happened? One of the hardest working men for Flint is out on his ass. He took fourth place in his own district. Well, it's called knowledge is power, Charlie. And, and you know, a lot of people don't know they're in a war. So how you fight a war, you don't even know you're in. And once you expose it, they don't even know what you're talking about. So... Yeah. Knowledge is power. The Bible say my people will be destroyed for the lack of what? Knowledge. And that's what's going on all over America. <clears throat> well, are you saying it's you're the disciple of the Lord? The narrative say moving a city forward, whether it's Detroit or Flint. But hell is only moving a few people forward and leaving everybody else behind. And I, and I articulated plain as I know how in plain English, and they didn't get it. They didn't understand it. Well, what, 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 what causing the turn on you? Because I've been up there a number of times. You're a, a very um, vocal supporter of, of the people. You work hard for your constituents. I see you rescuing hungry dogs. It's the powers that be. Money begot corruption. Flint is known for having the poison water. Flint is known for revenue sources to come in. Even uh, the resource from uh, Biden, um, it came in rescue money. $47.3 million haven't been allocated to the residents as of now because the stakeholders said it should be invested. But the narrative from the mayor says, what do the public want? Clearly, ain't a thing been said. Like I say, even with the water poison, people haven't seen a dime. And they didn't came up with a narrative in a way that the money is, is going to be allocated to, supposed to be for minors, knowing you can't give money to minors. So the parents is the one raising the kids. So the money is in probate. Ain't nobody seen a dime. It's a money grab going on in this community. And I expose it. And I refuse to do less. And I'm elected to help the residents with truth. Do, do you and I won't back down. Do you, Mr. Davis, do you think that uh, your support of uh, Trump at any point had something to do with your loss? Yes, with the, with the corruption of politics, they used that against me because my support of Trump was to get resources. If you remember, it was at the time then Trump had wrote a check, some kind of relief for six hundred dollars one time. After I got off of this show right here, Black Bart picked me up saying when. Uh, Charlie, you the one asked me what you thought about the election. I clearly said, well, hell, Biden said if you ain't black if you don't vote Democrat. Hell with that. I vote for whoever going to help me. I'm tired of voting Democrat. So and when, at that statement, that's what caught their attention off of y'all show, Charlie LaDuff, no bullshit. And then from there, it went from there to Mike Pence. It went to uh, New York Times and, and other media outlets. But that stuff don't phase me. So at the end of the day, Charlie was even in Flint at Bishop Airport. When I pleaded with Mike Pence in the audience that was on hand at Bishop Airport about helping Flint, not because I was a doggone Republican, but I don't care if you're white, black, blue, green, we need help, even in Detroit. And they spit that narrative to ignorant black folks that didn't know no better as I was a Republican. When clearly all I was doing was pleading for... Detroit, Ben Harbin, everybody else, we need some damn help. They, they, damn didn't they didn't say Republican. They didn't say Republican. What's so wrong about being a Republican? I mean, where did there you go? No, I'm just and I'm just asking because I mean we keep acting like you know there are no black Republicans. We keep acting like there are no white Democrats. I mean these tend to be more I think economically divisive than than any or, and socially divisive. But why do we keep acting like that's a bad thing? 
Up here, Great they use question. it to weaponize people. They weaponize me instead of helping people. Up here, people don't even have running water. Up mm-hmm. here, people got tops on their roof. Up here, people don't even cost them amazing them. It's delinquent on taxes and water bill. But yet, they want to weaponize the Republican Party. God bless whoever. The Bible says you should be the head, not the tail. Why in the hell is all Democrats the beggars? We should be the lenders, not the borrowers. And look at this. So I got a problem with that. You were the most celebrated man in conservative circles for like as long as it was good for them, a couple months. And now you're sitting in a car in a lot. What's behind you there? Some parking garage? Yes, it it was. Yeah, it was a summer festival deal. But I'd much rather be having this discussion. They were they were asking you to do TV shows and whatnot. And now, wow, what a what a. What a year it's been, brother. <laughs> Fucking hey. Well, Charlie, if truth be told, I had to sweep a lot of it under being quiet. I was offered uh, a TV deal with the, what you call that, um, Newsmax. Uh, yeah. Even I had calls, even some discussion on governor. I had all kinds of on the Republican side of it. was very embracing. And they sound a narrative how the Republican Party is so, I'm going to use the word, racist and divisive. Clearly, only racist and divisive, I didn't came in contact as a person, is this doggone Democratic Party. If you don't jump, they'll use uh, a narrative like Black Lives Matter and all this other stuff just to divide a community that's already hurting. I have my own money, so therefore I still speak my own truth. We are hurting as a black race of people, and the people that's reaching out to help us clearly right now, and I'm going to say it, and I say it again, hell is the Republican Party. And, and, and Charlie, before Gretchen with my one, the Democratic Party did not li- send money down the I-75 corridor, Benton Harbor, Detroit, and Flint. So the black clergy that's in Flint was going to elect a, a, a Republican governor. And the good black folks, at the last minute when they sought the money, they put marijuana on the ballot to legalize it. And that's why we're legal right now in Michigan, marijuana. So, so I know the whole story. It's all corrupt. Let's, let's, do, inside, on, let's do Inside Flint for a minute. There's you, kind of an odd guy on his own, uh, his own wing of things. Then you've got the mayor, Sheldon Neely, doing yes. his thing, his power consolidation. Then you got a guy like Eric Mays, friend of the show, who is trying to consolidate his power. He hates Neely. You know, he sued him and, you know, the chief of staff beat him up and they're trying to garnish his check for legal fees. Then you got the white money power. Right. So you've got four nodes. They ganged up. You're out. Now they're going after each other. How does it shake out in Flint? It's really well, at the end of the day, gentrification now is taking reign because the, the side of town they want to gentrify is a nail in the coffin called zoning. Once they pass that, it's a wrap because what they did back in the day, they bought black folks and poor folks out. But now they came up with a new educated way, even working in Detroit, by the way. It's called taxation, taxing you out. So they increased, they quadrupled our property taxes as we speak and added hundreds of million dollars worth of tax millages on people that can't afford a dime increase. Really? We talked about that, Charlie, just the ways that people are being, you know, Moved priced out, out of their yeah. communities here in Detroit. So obviously it's taking place in Flint, too. It's it's the new yes, gentrification, ma'am. as he said. You're right. And I found this fascinating. You said more or less, let me round up to a number. $50 million Biden bucks, Biden bucks for COVID comes to Flint, right? It's emergency, yes. emergency money. The man, the murder rate up in Flint is, is insane, right? They're having problems with garbage collection, everything. And you're going to take the $50 million emergency dollars and invest it? I thought this was a quick plug-in to, like, how, much, how many police could you hire for how many years for that $50 million. Correct. 
Absolutely correct. It's all, it'll make you just come to tears when you see the corruption behind the scenes. See, it's meetings before the meetings before the meetings. I was blessed to be on the Board of Economic Development, uh, another development called Brownfield Redevelopment. I know all about the movement of dollars. And that's how, I, I, at the end of the day, I became the, the vice president of Flint Council. But it's a power struggle. I don't need a spotlight. I just need to help these folks get a roof because I ain't never, pl I played Hollywood and all that, but I ain't never had a hit record. So I'm not a, a, a lifelong politician. My job is to really help and expose what I do see to be the problem, why it always be ghettos in every city I ever played in. And I found out why. Me Ignorance. Well, Mr. Davis, let me ask you this. Had a Republican... His name's Maurice. Oh, right. Well, Maurice, I'm sorry. Give me yes, respect. Yes, right. Had a Republican party... He's, he's equal. He doesn't get any more or any less respect. Maurice. Okay. You're red, he's Maurice. Okay. Okay. Have the Republican Party reached out to you since, you know, Trump, all the major election is over to come do something with them now further past the Trump honest, thing? Uh, red, <laughs> consistently... All the way to consistent to this day. But, you know, it, it's stuff I ain't never endeavored. I don't know nothing about being a governor. I don't know nothing about a lot of this, you know. I never wanted to be a state rep. I, ne I never even dreamed of that. My thing was just holding a good time. But I know one thing. I will stand strong and I'm not a fair weather friend to people that's hurting. And that's where I, I just, I'm eating every day. But the people I'm representing have nothing. So they depend on me. And the power, I'm going to tell y'all what happened with this election. The mayor backdoored me. Mays backdoored me. Everybody, they ran nine people in my ward to get me out. And watch this. All nine of them is friends. They didn't care who won as long as they took me out of there. Because I won't comply with this government and the corruption that's going on. And I guarantee that's God's truth. Step number one, because there's a whole, it's interesting, folks. This, this is what I'm doing for you all through the week till two in the morning. There's a whole political war going on for Flint. Like you think it's a backwoods, broken down place. As I always say, there's a lot of money in poverty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And there's a reason it continues and continues yes. and continues. And let me bring it around to everybody. We're all chipping in. So I think our sister city, because I very much think like Flint is very much part of Detroit and yes. vice versa, that we should be paying attention. That what happens there happens here. Well, Maurice, will you run again next term? Oh, I'm done with that. No, 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 no. Uh, to be honest, Red, I didn't run this time. I'm the president of a neighborhood association, and the residents had me to run because of their living condition. I own a lot of property in Flint, a lot of property. And I've been blessed a long time. I've been a businessman. I own businesses. But the thing of it is, is this. Once you see, I had to figure out why everywhere I go, it's a ghetto. It ain't the people's fault. It's the people you elect. They have a narrative to run you to the pole, and they only need you and when they need you. I promise you, I'm telling you. Oh, and you. they spend a fuck of a lot of money to fuck your mind up. So Absolutely correct. That, uh, by the way, what's the name of your podcast? It's a very good one. Maurice Davis Blues and News with Beverly Mike side. And you get that on Facebook, right? Man. Oh, hey, Beverly. Oh, oh, Beverly, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Oh, look at that. She's like, when am I getting out, Maurice? When am right, I getting out? Right. Oh, no. Why are you keeping her hidden, Maurice? You know, we could have been talking to her all along. She made me turn it. <laughs> she made me turn it. Now, Beverly, Beverly, it's, it's Maurice Davis and Beverly Mike side. Mike side, that's uh, from Ireland, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the Ireland side of Flint. That's fine, Charlie. That's, it. <laughs> That's your Facebook stage name, Mike Side. My, now, uh, Beverly, you're a mild man or woman, very elegant, great vocalist, etc. I heard you just going off. It wasn't. It wasn't like you. You went off eh, about a month ago about all the shenanigans going on and what they were doing to your guy. How do you look at your time? and service of Flint. Do you regret it? Did you make a difference? No, I, don't, I don't regret it because it was well needed and it's still needed. And as of today. Maurice, you've muted it, bro. 
streets cut down, their sidewalks repaired, which is what we do, try to get it to take place. And today, while I was at work, I got calls and I called the departments that do that kind of work and turned it in. So, no, I don't regret it because these people need help and they're not getting it. So, no, I don't regret it at all. I appreciate all that uh, Maurice and myself, all that we do for the people, because like he said, we're fortunate enough that we can take care of ourselves and what we need, we can get. But these people cannot. And so I don't regret it at all. Future. That's the key, Charlie. That's what people keep forgetting that it's not about me, it's about us. And everybody has to have that pers- that that, per- that perspective that, you know, yeah, you can eat, you can travel, you can do whatever you need to do, but what about everybody else? Everybody's forgotten about everybody else. It's every man for himself. So I, I kudos think, to, yeah. to both and of you. And I think that we all know that in America. So, and, and, and hold on, Red. And and we're lo- I think we're looking, you know, we, we, we got to, we were looking for a tribe. We're looking. At, I, I don't. I don't trust any of it. They're not looking out for me. I'm paying out my ass. Um, I want to say this before I forget. You know our friend Jordan, the young man. We got yes. him the car and yes. everything. Yes. You know, got him insurance. Got him his driver's license. You want to know what our young friend did? He g- looked around. Said there ain't nothing for me here in Detroit. He got in the car. He just learned to drive. He drove all the way to the Rocky Mountains, and he's filling airplanes with fuel. He's begun his life. I'm very proud of him and you for supporting him. But sadly, another good young one got to go. Yeah, because there's nothing here for him. Fucking A. Right. Yeah. You, you have to send your youth out away from where they came up if you want them to succeed. And it shouldn't be like that in your city. It should be opportunity for them to stay home if they want, per se. But... Good for Jordan. Yeah, I, mean, I give him a lot of credit for taking that initiative, and 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 as a young man to look around and say, you know what, I I, I got I want more oh. than this. It's nothing. And, and that's better than staying here and saying there's nothing here for me right. and complaining about it. I get it. Um, but there's so many people, you know, th- that are like Maurice. People, I, you know, they take the opportunity, they run for an office because they really believe that they can make a difference. But I always say that it's the process. It is not conducive to progress. And people get in and they see that, you know, they can't do anything. It's the status quo and nothing changes. Um, what do you think of that, mannequin? <laughs> I agree, that, Joey. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, know, I know you made a plastic, but it doesn't mean you don't. You you can you can't talk. Strong, silent type. What, what are you feeling about that mannequin? Mannequin? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, for real. Oh, okay. For real. For real. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, I I really don't know. You know. That's great radio. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's why I, I'm a mannequin. <laughs> I don't talk. All right, listen. Um, and, and who's showing this? Look, our next segment, I, look, I, let, let me say this. I, I actually went and tried to educate myself about Medicare. Basically, when you're 65, right, there's two types. There's Part A and Part B. Part A is your hospital insurance. Part B is your personal medical stuff, right? Your okay. teeth, your medicine, right? All, your, your doctor visits. It, it's confusing. Really confusing. It's it's really confusing. So I, I I went and for a while looked at this website. It's pretty cool. Uh, Medicare Guide, right? The, you can get a personal representative to help you with this, to walk you through it, to explain it, right? You, instead of googling around trying to get some help, like you did with your PPP loan, you, you like <laughs> we're trying to get right. your unemployment and you don't know what the fuck is going on, there's somebody out there to help you. It's yourmedicaidguide.com, right? You can contact them at 888-970-2940 or again, yourmedicareguide.com. I, I know Lic- something like they cost. It doesn't cost. They're licensed and they'll help you. Zoom, personal, telephone. For free. For free. I mean, serious. I, I, not, I, you know, I availed myself of it. This, this is good and interesting, and it can help you. Right? And it's not just for people over 65. It's disabled, younger people. Okay? Where do you go? Yourmedicareguide.com. 
It's a good one. So, Charlie, you know, this is I don't want to get too deeply into this, but I do want to throw this out. The next thing that, you know, the government is printing and throwing away money back to back, unemployment just all over the place. One thing that they're overlooking are the small business loans. So small businesses were given loans to help them through the pandemic and the shutdown. But that's still they've still not recovered, but they're obligated to pay it back. That's something else that I think that needs somebody needs to look at. Like, you know, they bailed out airlines and industries with millions of dollars, billions on top of dollars. But, you know, small businesses, you know, here you got, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars um, and not really able to recover it. They got to pay it back. My advice is this. You best get yourself an accountant. I would not be fucking around with the government and money. No, no, especially right now. Uh, be, before we can find out, like, where you go to get some free help. Get yourself an accountant. Do not get lean. Do not get garnished. Right? Yeah. Take care. Of you. It's not a joke, folks. Listen to Maurice. The sharks are out there. Um, HSBC, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo. They're too big to even jail, much less fail. Yeah. The ones getting fucked with are us. Yeah. The ones paying. So get yourself some help. Now, here's the thing. Remember when we were doing last week the coward cops that drove away? There's a drive-by right in front of them. Yep, I remember that. And the fucking media steals it. Look, next month, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please there, Red. How you like that, Maurice? It's better than your podcast. Listen, no sound effects. (laughs) Go ahead, guys. I just got promoted to sound engineer. Get ready for it, folks. Middle of next month, we're making a big shift. A no bullshit news hour. We're going to be moving a couple of days a week. We're going to have video elements. We're going to flip this baby. Get ready for it. Here's what I'm expecting. We do a lot of new. Maurice, you know it. You're a fan of the program here, right? We get break yeah. a lot of news. We're not afraid. We're very well connected in there. Here's what I'm expecting. TV, especially you. You, I see you do it. You're going to grab our shit. You're not going to say courtesy up without giving me the courtesy of asking. I'm going to grant it. But you have to act like adults and ask because you work on TV and we work on the Internet. We're not selfish. Right. But here's what I want. Once it goes to the Internet, you use your words. But our video is embedded at the top of your Web page. Then you can put your video too. But you're not going to put our name in a corner, say courtesy of, and and jack a million views. You're not going to do it anymore. You're going to embed ours. Then you can embed yours. And if you want to use our stuff, you may not put your report on YouTube. You will put ours on YouTube. You don't have that. It's, It's such a weird new era that I'm not selfish. This is about serving the public, right? Right. And if the big media companies aren't going to do it and the small scrappy ones got to do it, we got to arrive at some kind of compromise. Quit stealing our shit. Yeah. Atlanta, what is that? Atlanta Black Star. Motherfuckers ripped the URL off, made it theirs, and put their stamp on it. I wrote to them like cease and desist that shit. We'll share, but you can embed ours. Right. So this thing's doing five, ten million views. We didn't get nothing. We didn't get nothing for the drive-away cops. No. Now we got a new one this week. Everybody knows Greek Town's out of control, right? They let this shit been festering forever. Now it's some dude on Instagram, Maurice, right? He, the cop dropped a guy in the middle of Greek Town, right? He's on Instagram. He deserves to be asked. He deserves to be linked to. Right. But they don't here. We can do that. By the way, let me let me teach you all you middle of the country media people. I I studied media law. Fair use. I'm going to play these. It's fair use because I'm commenting on the product they made. This one first coming from Channel 7. Here's what they did with another dude's video. About the cop dropping the guy in Greek town. Seven Action News Report broadcast is in Detroit with what the department is saying about the video. 
Well, multiple videos from last night are surfacing online, and we don't know all of the context You're right now. To but there's one video oh, in hey, you talk to over. Rewind. I'm sorry. Rewind. <laughs> I, every time I see it. Look, wait, just listen to what he says here. Videos are surfacing online. But they're online. And we don't know all of the context right now. Pause. There's one and we don't know the context. <laughs> but play video in particular is getting a lot of attention. It's been viewed over a hundred thousand times in less than six hours. Stop. A man punched in the face by the It's been viewed over a hundred thousand times in six hours. We don't know what the fuck it is, but we're gonna throw it up there too. Oh, and by the way, I'm the reporter. I'm nowhere near Greek town because it's too fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cross town in front of the police headquarters, which is pretty fucking scary too. Like, dude. You Charlie, know, you're the only person. I mean, seriously, you have walked deep into the the stuff. Mannequin. I'm, I'm, Go ahead, Karen. No, I'm sorry. Um, I, I want Joey to talk if he wants to. I'm saying I, you're the only person. You have gone. You, 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 you canoe down the Rouge River. You go in people's homes. I remember when you put the lady's bathrobe on, which is probably one of the best stories. You took a bath in her bathroom. I mean, you go to where people are. And that's something that not just, you know, media folks, but businesses. People are always afraid to go to where the stories are generated and talk to the people who know the stories, who are the stories. I mean, it's just it's it's a reality. So that's why you have a different rapport. That's why people call you and tell you things and and give you the video. You got the video first of the guy when the police car was driving off. So that that trust is earned. You can't earn that level of trust and respect if you don't go to where the people are. You better know these coppers. Right. Because when you putting shit like this out, you a lot of cops will get mad. The public will get mad. You got to be connected and enough and, and courageous enough, this is what it is. And you gotta have a long relationship so you know you're not being lied to. And then you gotta follow up what your source told you anyway. Let's go to the other, if you'll look, and by the way, if you're listening, you can't, let me tell you, nowhere in there is the guy's name or a link to his mm -hmm. Instagram, cause that dude is out on the street. And you know, like Maurice was showing us, all them shells he had in his hand. If Maurice is going to film out of his window, I'm not going to take Maurice's name off it and claim it as my own. I'm going to call the man and want to know what he's seen in life. What do you make of that, Maurice? Man? You're right. You're absolutely right. They don't want to give you credit. I mean, that, that's, that's pardon. I mean, that's out of order. I think that's funny. And you can't eat credit, but it's like we're all trying to build something because something's missing in the media. Right. And and you can't, you know, look, I'll tell you what, when I left Fox 2 and I was writing a book about going across the world in America, you know, going across America, right, called Shit Show, the country's collapsing, the ratings are great, a bestseller. Guess what Fox did? They would not grant me permission to use my own work. Did you hear what I said? They wouldn't grant me permission to even reuse my own words. And now you're doing that to me. No, you said courtesy of Deadline Detroit. You never even called. Here's Fox 2's bit on the dude getting dropped in Greektown. It's that punch from a. Where's that punch? Caught on video and it's hard to watch. It's that oh, it's punch from a Detroit police officer that launched again. an internal investigation into his on video, and it's oh, hard to watch. It's so hard to watch, we're going to loop it. Yeah, it's three that times. punch from a Detroit oh, police officer okay, that launched on. an internal investigation the, into you, his. You guys see his name up out there anywhere? No. Dude, they actually oh. shot it? But, it's hard to watch. Well, this is the thing to me. We haven't even heard an interview from the guy that shot the video exactly. who would probably be able to get a clearest and, description and, of what happened. And yet, maybe we did. I can't say for sure, but it certainly ain't here. No, it's not. Right? Just a knockout. I, I know that maybe they talked to him. You know, I think in the beginning of this piece, we, we talked to the guy. That's fine. Then put him on or put his name in. Charlie, ask Maurice this. This is the thing. Well, Maurice the can same, hear you, The Karen. same thing that you're saying about media coverage. 
is the exact same thing about people who are elected or people who are in positions to help people that they know nothing about, that they're afraid of. And there is the value that Maurice, Maurice knows the people in the neighborhood. He lives next door to them. He talks to them. He eats with them. You've got people making decisions about people using a bridge card that don't even know what a bridge card is. You've got people making decisions about um, what a single mother has to do. And they don't know anything about that. They have a nanny. There, therein lies the major disconnect between as to why people in positions, whether they're in the media, whether they're elected, whether they're in corporate positions, they can't do what they're supposed to do because they don't know. They collect a check to push a pen and push paper, and it never turns into progress for the people that they're supposed to serve. So what are we supposed to ask, Maurice? Well, Karen, I understand <laughs> thoroughly because the lady that the mayor had to replace me. The mayor had to replace me. Mm-hmm. She goes by the title. She told me, uh, Cosmo Davis, no disrespect, but my name is Dr. Liddell Lewis. Doctor. Wait a minute. I'm a doctor, and she went on along and spelled out all the accolades. But the, I'm a, well, hell, this is, this is no bullshit. The damn truth of it, the matter is, every damn body the so-called doctor represent don't have a pot to piss in. What kind of doctor are you living in the in the ghetto, in the heart of the hood? So her perspective is not the people that she's representing. They have nothing. But she's so adamant about herself with her ego, she's a doctor. She's not down on the ground like Charlie, you, or anybody else that can relate. She can't relate with them folks. A whole so she in compliance with the mayor with what uh, 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 putting money over in accounts investments not helping the residents no resident over on this side of town qualified because of what stipulations to have any work done on these old ass houses you got to have insurance you got to have your taxes paid and all these other things that they know these people don't qualify. That used so to be normal in American work. life. And you can't even trace these deals and contracts. I got four freedom of informations out there. Detroit police. I want to know about the investigation into the alleged rape by a senior offic- uh, cop. I'm female subordinates. Quarter that last. Week. Where is it? I'm waiting for the number of children shot during the COVID pandemic. Where is it? I'm waiting for the governor to tell me, uh, uh, for the the state to send to me the reasons why TCF Emergency Hospital was closed. I'm waiting to hear about the contract for that outside company that was counting the nursing home deaths. I've already paid thousands for this, and I don't have it. I don't have it for you out there. You so. Well, that's because they they not scared of media no more. I'm not media, motherfucker. What I'm, I'm saying, Charlie LaDuff. I know you, Charlie LaDuff, but that's you know the area. And oh, field. I'm coming. Oh, I gotta, uh, uh, I'm gonna gear up my lawyers again. No fucking way. This here shows that they are more becoming internet entertainers and more concerned with the clicks and the views than actually doing the news. Play it, Joe, and I'm going to tell you what the news is off this because I'm doing it for you. I'm going to tell you where we're going next week. Play it. Use of force. Ooh. I've exercised my authority to suspend the officer in question uh, pending the conclusion of this investigation. Uh, that suspension took place last night. Chief James White speaking to the Police Board of Commissioners we'll Thursday about second. why he made this decision okay, five why? days after the incident around closing time in Greektown Sunday morning. This incident is unacceptable. And it gives me great concern. For context, okay. this cell phone video shows. Okay, look here. Want to know what, what I'm hearing happen? And I got some appointments coming up because because i know these police i'm told this officer that dropped that dude got some problems interacting with the public you know what i'm saying we last did. summer i'm told they're going to move him out of special operations like he just it too much right it got up to the to the point of commander the commander overrode the subordinates opinion about this guy and reinstated him to the, to the streets. It's a whole lot of holy hell about ready to happen in there. And you want to know what the police do? And you want to know what this media is doing? Uh, I've suspended him and it will be an investigation. Last week, what did we hear? We've suspended him uh, and it's an investigation. And, we, uh, and they promised an investigation. That's what you get. Who the fuck is doing the work 
following the police. The police, if in any sort of journalism in any big town, is the meat and potatoes of of the press. That's a big fucking bureaucracy yeah. that's got to do with your liberty, and you don't know nobody doing the politics inside. Okay, I got it. That'll be next week, folks. I'll get to the bottom of it. I'm hearing. We don't let it go. I love you, police. You know that. You know, it's, it's this kind of shit. I'm not, I'm not convicting this dude at all, but I'm going to have to get to it. And there's a reason people want me to know, because we'll handle it fairly. Right. But that's the context. Whether this There's rarely any follow up, Charlie. I mean, we hear about stuff all the time and, and, and what happened is, you know, we'll follow the story. We'll keep you. We don't know what happened. Like what happened? OK, there he's suspended. So a month from now, two months from now, he's probably back on the force. Nobody knows what the what the backstory is. And this can go with anything. We hear this all the time with everything. We'll keep you posted. We'll, we'll stay close to the story. And we don't know what yeah, happened. Exactly. And we're, we're on to the next thing. They teach that in, like you specs Howard. Get out of here. We'll keep you updated. No, you won't. You'll wait till we do it and take the bullshit. <laughs> but that's what I love about it. Maurice, how many cops does Flint have? Why, when you call the police, don't they come? Well, we have at this current time, I think just shy of 100. And uh, it's all politics. Hell, you know, the hidden narrative in Flint, they're singing crime and blight, which is cold word for higher taxes. Downtown Flint have no crime. Because we got more than one agency, local cops. Beverly work at the township police department. Wait, wasn't wait, wasn't wasn't somebody just dropped in front of the whole hotel down there on Saginaw Street a couple of weeks ago? Uh yes, that's that's well, I would consider that crime downtown, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have uh, Michigan State Police, Charlie shit. But that's a narrative. It's safe down here. But on the north end of Flint, it's different treatment. You just ain't gonna get the same treatment where it's a poor population of people. It, you can't even get nine one one. You get put on hold, even if sometimes they don't even ask. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Breaking news. Breaking. Beep 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 beep. More. Beep 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 beep. What'd you say about nine one one in Flint? You get on. You could put on hold. If sometime they don't even answer, you have to call back. Nine one one, please hold. What the. F- Fuck. That sounded like us when we were in the bankruptcy. <laughs> Remember, the police station used to close here at 4 o'clock. That tells you where we're <laughs> at. That's, I'm sorry we got to do it. Welcome to your Friday. Let's move right along here now. Um, getting towards the end of the program here now. Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York State, the ballsy and Democratic attorney general, unlike ours, Going there, investigating, she thinks he broke state and federal law and he sexually harassed 11 women, many of them his, his employees. That, coupled with the bigger thing, well, I'm sorry, it's not, I apologize. I don't want to diminish that. Shouldn't be doing that in the workplace or probably anywhere else. But, again, I want to apologize, but to me... When old people are dying in the darkness and you're lying about it, that one gets the manslaughter to me, okay? That dude's on the ropes. Even the president turned. How do we localize it? Obviously, our gov- governor, uh, no, no reports of any grabby hands on her, right? But <laughs> no. it, it's in reverse. She gets caught out bullshitting, shaking down businessmen, taking airplanes, right? I don't think this shit's legal. We'll let, again... Jocelyn Benson, the Secretary of State, make that judgment. But it's in reverse. The governor has an answer for those nursing homes yet. And there is that investigation. What do you think the Cuomo situation means to Michigan? If anything, I'll give it to Red. Well, in my opinion, I believe since she followed Cuomo's gameplay, it's it's just going to come out that I don't see the connection between him groping 11 women in the nursing homes for Michigan, but I believe it's going to come out that she followed his game plan and stuck to it even after it was proven to be wrong. Yeah, let me. I'm going to go to you, Karen, but let me make this clear. This is how I see it. The media was so fawning. They were so in bed with 
the politicians that they let Cuomo slide. They never questioned what was going on. They took his word for it. When it comes out, they're so ashamed of themselves that they go ballistic, right, on his mannerisms. Okay. It might be opposite here. Karen, what happens, say, once the Auditor General of Michigan, if it happens, and it may very well may not, that they wildly, the Whitmer administration wildly undercounted nursing home deaths? What does that mean for the election next year? Nothing. Ooh. I'm just, I mean, and that's just honest. Nothing. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll be admitted if, in fact, it comes out, it'll be presented like an oversight, uh, an, an underestimation or an inaccuracy due to something or somewhat. But, you know, it'll be smoothed over, uh, you know, nice, nice, nice sound bite in response to it. And, and we'll continue to move on and, and dismiss, you know, the, the, the lives that were negatively impacted as a result. Maurice, your thought, because, you know, you're you're in politics as well. Well, the similar thing is just a narrative that they spend in quote more than stepped on toes and they're going to come at you. And and when they put that power structure and that money behind you, you're in a world of trouble. It's all politics, Charlie. You sing and you dance by their music and they're coming at you. They did me. They said I was against the LGBT community. They, I mean, they, they the death threats. I didn't have it all. So it's just. He biting the bullet. If 11 women, hell, what about the first one? She should have said something. You get that many? Mm-hmm. You see, it's all just, it's, it's just what it is, corrupt at the end of the day. Yeah, and I, I just think we in the press and we in the public got to admit that we are part of the corruption. The moral corruption, the professional corruption, right? Co- uh, corruption of integrity. Here's what I think. I think it's better if, if it even happens. Again, I'm, I'm hoping the number's accurate, right? And, yeah. and we will report it as such if it's so. Because that's what this is really all about. Not that nobody's head hunting Whitmore. It's about fixing a broken system. This is where it starts. This be accurate. Same shit we're going after Snyder and Flint. Right. I mean, just answer to it. Right. Okay. So it's best politically, just like Cuomo, because you think this guy's dropping out of the, you know, he's up for reelection too. He's on the ropes. The party put him to the side. The next most important seat the whole country will be looking at is Whitmer, right? Yeah. The Democratic Governors Association has got $8 million for her. She got $8 million. The Democratic National Committee probably got $8 million. It's going to be a barn burner. It's best politically if it comes out sooner rather than later. But. A lot of people, this is their one and only issue. And I know I lived a whole year of it, and I asked you to do a better job, and you didn't. You got your stupid little hipsters saying stupid little things that don't mean anything. Anything. And you know, you said earlier, you know, we, we take a part in that corruption, and, and I need people to understand where we take part in. Well, we're not demanding the people that are supposed to be keeping us informed to give us the whole story, the whole truth, not feed us the bullshit that they want us to hear and, you know, give us the real. Quit all this. This uh, To me, it seems like you're laying in bed with the enemy so you can stay friends with the enemy. The, the media is like that with the politicians nowadays. And we taking these little bits and pieces and not demanding the whole story. Where's my fucking update? Where's me being kept posted? You know what I'm hearing? And this is the truth. A lot of, lot of listeners, you know who they trust? You, you know who they want in the slot for lieutenant governor? I got more than five of these. Want to know who? Karen fucking Dumas. Everybody all of a sudden, Karen, wants you to work with them, talk with them, run with them. I mean, I, I, I feel very honored to, to work with you. I, I really do. I, I think, I, I just don't think you want it anymore, but... Oh, Charlie, confusion. first of all, you know, I'll be honest with you. The, my, the, the three words that people say to me that I value more than anything is I trust Just my you. Ass. Um, and, and, I, and I value that. I respect that. I appreciate it. And I would never violate it. Um, it took a lot of years, you know, to get to the point where hopefully I have developed a reputation where people know that I am not a BSer. I've been criticized for being honest, for being upfront, uh, for demanding a level of excellence in people that are taking dollars, especially public dollars, to do their job. Um, 
Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I've been called the B word. I've been called, you know, part of the high heel mafia, the whole nine yards. But, you know, I believe that people should do what I know they can do. When you can pick up the phone and call somebody in city hall or in government and get and, and, and get something done because you know somebody, then you know it should be done for the people who don't know anybody and that are calling that and need that 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 problem solved. But, you know, again, like Maurice and I were saying earlier, it's not conducive for progress. I just, you know, at one time, maybe I thought that there could be a difference, um, you know, depending on who's in these respective seats, but it's an uphill battle, you know, with so many, uh, so many landmines in it that, you know, it's just, it doesn't work. You don't People want it. You are don't comfortable want it. taking a check. You don't um, want it and just anymore. Moving on. What'd you say, Charlie? You don't want it anymore is what you said. No, I just, I did it. I did my No, time. you know, and I'll be honest with you. I drive through this city sometime and, and I don't mean this in, a, in an arrogant way. I miss being in charge because I see a whole lot of stuff that should be <laughs> done differently. I, I do. I miss it because I looked, I said, this shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be happening. Then who's paying attention then to this? Listen to me. Then, then you must maybe listen to the people and consider it. And you too, Maurice, because now that I think about it, you too, your service to the people comes to kind of an ugly end. This is Miss Bitch over here, and this is Uncle Tom over there. And I know you both to have worked hard and, like, the end of it until you get a chance to step back and take a breath and take an assessment of yourself. That's got a fucking sting, Maurice. Well, no, no, no. If I was, I was never that. I never had I know. I, I, they, they, that's that's what you got well, tagged well, with. The sting is this. I'm going to tell you, if it's a sting, here go the sting, child. Okay. The tsunami of, I get, in my neighborhood, I know a lot of people. I know everybody in the whole city. And when people reach out to you to help them, and all you do is put their drum, your, their drums in the back of your truck. And take them. My reach, don't let these folks take my drone. And the, and they throwing their stuff, evicting their stuff from the porch to the curb. That's the state. And that, no further than that. It ain't nothing for me to, hell, I got it. I done did it. I done did Hollywood. I, I still do. I ain't did. I still do. I got stuff people don't even know I got because I have to dumb myself down. But the thing of it is, is this. People ain't making it, Charlie. And that's the sting if it was for me. Allow me to interpret that. Okay. Yeah, it stinks. Of course it stinks. Fuck yeah, it stinks. But I respect you, like, a ton. So I'm going to make you an offer here. How would you like to be special correspondent Flint for the No Bullshit News Hour? The special correspondent? Yep. Special to the No Bullshit News Hour, Maurice Davis. Now, now I want to make you a, I want to make you a journalism correspondent. Love it. Yes. Oh, wow. And That's by the way, you, you get to you get to do it your way. You you know how to edit and do everything. So good. Now we got to correspond. Hey, Beverly, is that OK? Does he have permission? Yes, permission. Well, she has to be the co-correspondent. Oh, no, oh. This, that, that's camera dude right there. That's Mike's side. Oh, no, there's a what we got to do is hook him up with a young photographer and get them out on the street and shit. We got to take their podcast, get them to, you know, give us a oh, three, a three minute bit. They're all over the place. I'm, I'm telling you, this is, I don't care if they didn't get elected. It is Mr. And Mrs. Flint. Watch it all come back around. It's about hey. ready to get weird people, in Flint. People on social media are like, please say yes, Maurice. Great idea. Yeah. Yay, Maurice, please say yes. And you, everybody's anxious for you to, 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 to be the correspondent uh, for No BS News Hour. Special Flint correspondent. It's not like it's a job for you, but when you got one, you got to do it, dude, and do that. You, you two got to do this. Well, I got the cameras. I got all of that, Charlie. I do my own videos. I got everything you need. As a matter of fact, I got a whole media crew. So, so I got that. I can... just been, like I said, I downplay myself. And that's what made it hard on me because I am my own complete person. I have media everything. So that that's done. I'm gonna be I got honest. cameras. I got all that stuff. I, I so think he's going to make more of a difference in, the, in this role than in the councilman role because... Now you get to be you 100% and ain't got to worry about that other bullshit. Correct, Will. But this is the other thing, too, is that while you may not be in a decision-making position, 
what you can do is encourage people to take more control over the decisions that they make so that it impacts their life. Therein lies the power. People have to know they have to be armed with information. They have to be armed with inspiration and the ability and the willingness and the confidence to make the, you know, to make different choices. I mean, that's where the decisions lie, whether it's from voting, whether it's whatever they do on a daily basis, they want to make their lives good for themselves and their family. So but you're I'm still a, in the control. I, I'm also you. trying to make uh, uh, Maurice and Beverly's life interesting because, you know, look, you don't have to bust my balls out there. I didn't get fired or nothing. <laughs> If you know me, I always jump in my life. Life's really short. You're not, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that's built to do 33 years at Volkswagen. Just, no. I'm no. Not that. If you are, I love you, man. I'm not. So, blues musician, city councilman, News real court. estate developer, news commentator, reporter. It's, life's supposed to be full till God takes it back. Mm. Damn too. And now Say that again, Charlie. Say that again. Life please. is supposed to be full until the Lord takes it back because it was only a loan. Now we got Flint correspondent. Yes. <laughs> Which means I don't got to drive up there. And, and, and then I don't expect to see Maurice standing at the police station when the shit actually happened six blocks over. He'll be on the block. Maurice will be in the back of the car with handcuffs That's on. What I'm <laughs> <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> That's how I will be up close and personal. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna end the program, but as we've been doing, uh, everybody knows that uh, the 20 year anniversary of 9 11 is just a month. just a month away, and I hope that you have sort of enjoyed my recollections of it. It's too important to world history. To have just given it, you're going to start seeing it, giving it three days, two days bullshit. It's the biggest event of my lifetime, certainly. And I'm proud to say, you know, again, this is about working people. To me, it was all about working people. And it's brought to you by working people, the bricklayers and allied craft workers at Local 2. You know this. They need workers in a great lifetime occupation. They will train you. They will give you a $2,000 bonus. There's pensions. There's health care. You just have to have pride and want to work. And you'll work to the end of your days. This is a career. This ain't, this ain't shuffling around, putting in applications. This is where you go. You simply go to bricklayers.org and click join BAC. Let me do it again. Bricklayers.org. By the way. Not all of us did great in spelling. B R I C K L A Y E R S. Well, what the fuck? Lay or lie, you know, lane or laid, you know, I mean, bricklayers with a Y dot org and join click B A C. Start building your future now. Now they take anybody. No, man, you got to be a. a, a I'm just I don't know, sure. man. Click it and gotta, find okay, out if well, it says, hey, we'll take anybody. I don't think it's that okay. kind of organization. All right. I think it's, you know, you got to be a hard worker. Of course. No, what I, I, I know that, I'm saying. You know, it's no extra requirements, stipulations. You know, some places require you to have. Extra. Try not to be grabby with your coworkers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Try not to leave uh, old people dead in the old folks' home. I mean, that's not a. God, you're asking for a lot, Charlie. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, this is a little excerpt. This is just a few days after. The airplanes hit, and it's um, cleanup time. It's recovery time. It's it's getting that metal out of there and looking for people. So here's in the middle of a story that I wrote uh, called The Night Shift to Numb the Body and Soul. Lunchtime comes at 9 p.m. for the iron workers. Some eat uh, the free grub in the Salvation Army tent. They have coffee, cake, and pepper steak, and nearly anything you want except a change in scenery. Some of the gang tanks lunch at a pizza parlor on Greenwich Street next to the Pink Pussycat, outside of which streetwalkers also work because capitalism abhors a vacuum. In the back of the pizza parlor, there is a little bar where the women talk friendly and are more friendly if you pay them. The iron workers and their foreman, Larry Keating, take their coffee outside and smoke cigarettes. They are covered in pock marks from where the slag sparks from the burning metal have smoldered into their necks and arms and eyelids. 
one of them, Al Beneke, goes back to the night he first got to ground zero. He grows animated and frightens a man in white shoes and a clean overcoat who is walking out of the pink pussycat. The size and volume of the iron workers upsets the man who has the look of never having suffered prolonged physical discomfort, hunger, or cold. He tosses a sheepish grin and gives a wide berth to the group of substantial men. Another man, similar to the first, walks out of the club alone, similarly dressed, and soaks his foot in a puddle which causes Dennis Telford to howl with laughter. Ha ha ha! You see that? It is the freest, most boisterous laughter all evening. Because laughing, screaming, even drinking coffee are not done at the pit. Never forget. Maurice, thank you. Karen, I love you. Good luck with your run for lieutenant governor. Thank Red, you. <laughs> Red, uh, you got a comedy show tonight? Yes, uh, actually in Detroit, Southfield and Plymouth, uh, inside <clears throat> Starters Bar and Grill. We start the show at 8 o'clock. And tomorrow night as well. Matter of fact, tomorrow night I'm challenging for a uh, comedy title belt. Show starts at 8. Simply Chanel from BET Comic View was on the books for this weekend. Which entrance cost? $20 per person. But if you get there before 8 and say you heard it on the show, two for the price of one. Word them up. Mannequin? <laughs> My man. All right. Try to love one another. If you can't, try to get along with one another. We'll see y'all. Bye, guys. Bye, Bev. See Bye -bye. you, Karen. See Bye. you, Bev and Marcus. <laughs>